China's central television channel 13 announced that Huawei's Kirin X90 chip uses a 5 nanometers process, putting an end to recent speculations. Although CCTV has made reporting errors in the past, its review process for such basic news is quite strict. The specification data was likely provided by Huawei to CCTV, as the broadcaster produced a detailed long-form report introducing Huawei's Harmony OS ecosystem, covering chips, operating systems, and application ecosystems, all fully self-reliant. Earlier online rumors suggested Huawei controls over a dozen chip factories in Shenzhen to produce various chips. Among them, Exxon Kailai, a state-backed company, is a key member of Huawei's chip ecosystem, having released several advanced chip manufacturing devices. A few months ago, photos of Huawei's lithography equipment surfaced online, claiming that 7 nanometers production has matured with significantly improved yields and 5 nanometers would be launched this year. These rumors faced widespread skepticism at the time, as almost everyone, including myself, believed Huawei's chips were manufactured by SMIC, with some obtained through overseas shell companies placing orders with TSMC, and no other channels existed. However, as the U.S. intensified scrutiny of TSMC and SMIC's 7 nanometers process reached near full capacity, Huawei continued to release new phones, computers, servers, and AI chips with steadily increasing production and no signs of shortages. This indirectly confirms that Huawei has indeed established a new chip production system in the Shenzhen Dingwen area. Regarding its relationship with SMIC, both are key projects supported by the state. The Shanghai government has built a domestic chip ecosystem around SMIC which not only manufactures 7 nanometers and 14 nanometers chips for Huawei and others, but has also achieved self-reliant 28 nanometers production, reaching world-class levels in cost and yield. This year, SMIC significantly reduced 28 nanometers chip prices, sweeping the market, and may focus on improving 7 nanometers process yields and expanding 28 nanometers mature chip production in the near future. Meanwhile, breakthroughs in advanced processes may largely be left to Huawei's ecosystem, as Exai and Kailai's potential lithography breakthroughs could also benefit SMIC. Huawei's chip ecosystem is a key investment project for the Shenzhen government. As one of China's wealthiest cities, Shenzhen's fiscal strength is undeniable. The industries it prioritizes have gained global leadership. For example, BYD leads the electric vehicle industry. DJI dominates the drone sector. Tencent is the world's largest gaming company with strong capabilities in social software and mobile payments. And Huawei is a vast conglomerate spanning telecommunications, AI, chips, consumer electronics, and cloud computing. Although Shenzhen faces fierce competition from Hangzhou and lags slightly in robotics and large scale AI models, it remains China's undisputed technological frontier. Shenzhen's strength in chip development lies in its status as a global hardware innovation hub with a complete supply chain, high cost advantages, and the ability to rapidly turn research into production with quick iterations. It is also an industrial hub with strong chip demand, enabling local design, production, and application with low costs and high efficiency in business collaboration. Online rumors claim that China has solved the extreme ultraviolet light source issue using LPP technology, enabling 5 nanometers chip production lines or even advancing to 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers processes. Is this possible? From a scientific theory perspective, it is feasible. However, from an engineering standpoint, it is unlikely in the short term. I have never believed in so-called leapfrogging. Scientific research progresses systematically with no shortcuts. Major innovations are merely new engineering approaches built on existing technology, achieving or surpassing previous solutions. Huawei's current 5 nanometers chips are likely achieved through chip stacking and advanced packaging, fitting more transistors into the same area. 
with power efficiency optimization. They reach performance equivalent to TSMC's 5 nanometers process. In other words, Huawei has taken a different path, using stacking technology to close the performance gap while steadily advancing lithography technology. Some online critics accuse TSMC of being a U.S. lackey and imposing a technology blockade on China. Honestly, despite political tensions across the Taiwan Strait, the technology and industrial sectors are deeply integrated. TSMC has not strictly blocked China or Huawei could not access its capacity. If TSMC thoroughly vetted every order, how could Huawei exploit loopholes? Moreover, China's chip industry growth relies heavily on Taiwanese talent. SMIC was founded by Taiwanese talent Richard Chong and is led by Mong Song Liang, trained by TSMC. TSMC also operates factories in China, albeit for mature processes training numerous chip professionals. These are just overt contributions. Due to shared language and culture, as well as similar lifestyles, mainland companies can attract Taiwanese tech talent with high salaries and excellent benefits. For Taiwanese professionals, working in China with preferential treatment is far more appealing than relocating to the distant U.S. It is certain that Huawei's chip industry cluster in Shenzhen and Dongguan relies heavily on equipment and components bypassing technology restrictions through gray channels or even smuggling. From an engineering perspective, Chinese companies can master these components and chemical materials, but it takes time. Meanwhile, China's demand for advanced chips is comprehensive, and it will continue to tap TSMC's capacity through shell companies or legal orders within regulatory limits, such as Xiaomi's 3 nanometers chips using TSMC's N3 process. The U.S. tech war against China aims to cripple Chinese technology, disregarding international ethics and business norms, so China need not pretend to be noble. As Deng Xiaoping said, whether a cat is black or white, it is a good cat if it catches mice. If the West ignores rules, China can play smart, and the victor writes history. Now, let's discuss the Kirin X90 chip's performance. It uses a 5 nanometers process with 10 cores and 20 threads. According to some tech bloggers' videos, its spec 2017 multi-core score after porting matches the Apple M2 chip. Due to the lack of authoritative tools, Many prominent bloggers are still conducting in-depth tests on absolute performance. However, most praise the product's user experience, with system smoothness undeniably surpassing Windows. Many consider its fluidity better than Apple's Mac OS, while others see them as comparable. From my personal experience, the UI is definitely smoother than Apple's ecosystem, but in productivity tasks like video exporting, it still lags behind Apple. With software like WPS and Domestic CAD, it offers a seamless light office experience, sufficient for 95% of government agencies and businesses. Combined with government support and security considerations, it opens a vast market. Notably, it supports virtual machine technology, allowing installation of the ARM version of Windows 11 with a decent experience, significantly addressing compatibility issues. It also enables self-iteration, using the Harmony OS platform to develop its ecosystem. However, becoming a universal, all-scenario development tool like Windows or Mac OS is a long road ahead, though not Huawei's short-term focus. In summary, Huawei's Kirin X90, as its first PC chip, exceeds expectations and shines brightly. Paired with Harmony OS, it completes the final piece of China's commercial ecosystem. Government agencies and sensitive enterprises no longer need to endure the so-called secure domestic Linux ecosystem. Other domestic chips like Lungsin have also launched operating systems based on open-source Harmony OS, sharing software resources with Huawei's ecosystem, enhancing Harmony OS's influence and attracting more developers. I personally predict that within two to three years, or even sooner, Huawei will return to the international market, starting with Southeast Asia and gradually reclaiming its past glory. This time, 
The U.S.'s attempts to suppress Huawei will be a pipe dream.